Warren Lewis, good afternoon. Warren Lewis. Warren, What's your name? Warren Joseph Lewis. What's Which your date? 85527. All right, Mr. Lewis, you're here this afternoon. You're seeking a commutation of your sentence. Um, you have a guest there with you? Who's the lady sitting by? I'm Chaplain McGraw. I'm here for moral support. All right. Well, thank you for being here. We appreciate it, uh, Chaplain McGraw. So, Mr. Lewis, I'm going to read some information. I ask you to confirm it. Then I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Marabella. He'll start the interview with you. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. All right. Mr. Lewis, you're seeking a commutation of your sentence. You were sentenced in April 1989 uh, uh, in Lafayette Parish to a life sentence for a second-degree murder conviction. Mr. Lewis, is that information correct? Correct. It's correct, ma'am. Sir, answer Mr. Marabella's questions, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Lewis. How are you, sir? I'm, I'm fine, sir. Uh, Mr. Lewis, how old are you, sir? 85. Mr. Lewis, uh, I've been waiting to see you all day long. Uh, it's, not, it's rare that I get to talk to somebody older than me. Um, <laughs> six years old, uh, you look a lot younger than I feel, I'll tell you that. Uh, uh, how long have you been in prison? 34 years, sir. Mr. Lewis, uh, you know, I was looking at your, your, your record. Uh, it, it appears that uh, maybe you were an angry man. You had a lot of uh, fights and things like that. Tell me, tell me what happened uh, back uh, 34 years ago in this incident in this bar. Tell me, tell me what, what happened as best you can remember. It, uh, me and uh, Donald, Donald Brudro walked in. I was sitting at a bar, Donald Brudro walked up and uh, he just stepped on my feet and told me, say, uh, you need to learn some uh, respect cause I kind of blowed on the, on the uh, ball maid. And I asked him, well, what that's, what that's his uh, girlfriend or something? And he did not respond, so I said, it must be, it must not be. So I said, well, you are uh, on my feet, get off of my feet. But I made a uh, verbal remark, and he hit me in the mind. And then what happened? We fought. And uh, come up, a knife come up, and I used it. Where did the knife come from? I don't know. It was it's it's several dudes in there. I believe somebody brought the knife and they said, but the dead say it was mine. Well, the, the record seemed to reflect that maybe you had the knife in your hand, you went back and sat at the bar with the bloody knife. You don't remember any of that? After uh after the, the fight, I, I went outside and threw the knife. Okay. So you threw the knife away after outside. Yeah, I tied the door, went out the door, sat back at the bar. So let me ask you this. How long had you been at that bar drinking that day? Uh, quite some time, sir. What were you drinking? Beer and veal. Okay. And uh, how long How long have you been drinking all your life? Ooh, since I was about 18. And how often would you drink? Weekends, practically every weekend. How often were you, was this a weekend? It was. It was. Uh, my one of my nieces had just got married. My, uh, my one of my nieces' daughter and I went to the wedding, and the club wasn't the ball wasn't far from there, and uh, I ended up in the bar instead of at the wedding. Uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, I, I, in, in looking at your 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 past record. Uh, you've had 29 arrests, 10 DWIs, or 10 DWI type arrests. Uh, you in 55, you had a fighting, 57 fighting, 60 fighting, 63 battery and kidnapping, 68 attempted murder, 68 attempted escape. 1980, you had a murder that you pled to manslaughter. Tell me about that murder and that manslaughter plea in 1980. What was that about? Oh, uh, the manslaughter? Yes, sir. Or the one in Texas? Uh, 
I, I didn't write down exactly where it was, but it was 19. Did you have more than one manslaughter charge? Well, they, well you got the manslaughter and the second, second degree thing. You know, no, I'm not talking about but, why you, so now, I'm talking about but, back in 1980, uh, you had a, uh, hang on just a second. Yes, it was in Texas, in Orange, Texas. Texas. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. You pled guilty to manslaughter, and you were yes, sentenced sir. three years in DOC in Texas. Tell yes, me sir. what happened. What were the facts? Well, uh, this dude, he comes up a pimp. He, he pulled up at the, at the, at, uh, the side of, of this bar, and uh, he, he told me and another dude was out there. We work for a roofing company, Billy Turner Roofing Company. We were drinking the Millers, sitting, standing out door. He told us we had to go because he had his women, they had to talk and he wanted some privacy. So I said, well, if you want privacy, go somewhere else because we out here drinking a beer. We're not bothering nobody. So he walked up to me, pulled a gun. I took the gun from him. I snatched it and he was heavy set. He knocked me down and uh, he was on top of me. And uh, I took the gun from him and shot him with it. And he took back from it, tried to put it in my face, and I snatched it again and shot him again. And I ended up shooting him three times before he quit. Mr. Lewis, I, I see a pattern. Alcohol, violence, you've done that all your life. We, can we agree on that? Well, that's, that's by right, sir. I had zero understanding when I drank, and uh, I think I think if I'd have stayed out there, I'd probably be dead today on the count of that. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about you. You drinking? We can we agree that you're an alcoholic? I would say I was not no more because thirty four years I never had a drink. I hear you, and that's a good thing. But what if you get out? Where are you going to be living at? If I get out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out there and try to help my daughters. I got three daughters, and uh, where? In Lafayette. Okay, so you hope to go back to Louisiana, Lafayette? Yes, yeah, I would, cause that's where my daughter's at, and my oldest daughter, she, mm -hmm. she just overcome cancer, and uh, she lived by herself. Her husband died, and I would like to help her as best as I can. Mr. Lewis, let me stop you for a second. I lived in Lafayette for a long time. I went to school in Lafayette for a long time, and I've never been into a restaurant that didn't have whiskey and beer and everything else. How are you going to be able to stay away from that stuff? Joke. Just, just place and the, the love of God changed me. I ain't the same fellow no more. I believe that, but I don't see very many programs that you've taken that deal with substance abuse? What sort of programs that have you taken that are gonna help you stay sober when you get out? Uh, I, I, I believe I, you haven't had a drink since you've been in prison. I believe all of that. But my fear is, and, and I know, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. If you get out, go back to drinking, you're gonna find yourself potentially in the same pattern you had before. Your history, as we just talked, has to do with drinking and doing crazy things. What is your plan to make sure you don't do that? And, and, and don't tell me, well, I've been sober for 35 years. I'm just not going to do it. Do you have a plan? Yes, sir. I have a plan to, to help my daughter. I got one that's just overcome cancer. I, I hear that. But that is a plan to help your daughters. How are you gonna help you to stay sober and not drink again? I just done, done made up my mind. I, I done had enough of that type of life I've lived before. Have you ever gone to an AA meeting? AA meeting? Yeah. No, but I, I've, I've uh, went to, uh, a uh, hundred, a hundred hours. And I've been going to uh, 
anger management, and I, I probably put in for uh, substance abuse, but I, I ain't never had it yet. They put me on backlog. You think you need, you think you'd like to have some substance abuse before you get out to make sure you'll be able to stay clean and sober? Well, if it's, if it's, if, it, if they're going to give it to me, yes, I take it. I want, I need it. I feel I need it. Okay. I, I appreciate your honesty. I, I agree with that. Well, let's talk a little bit about your anger. How, how are you going to be able to control your anger? I've I realized taking, some of I've the been, anger had to do with alcohol, but I've you've been, got I've been, said, that's a lot of different things in your background. If, if, if I ain't drinking, I'm pretty good at controlling my anger. Well, we both realize that, that drinking is a real issue and a real problem. But, but I've been going to anger management. I then took five classes. Okay. So tell me, tell me how you deal with, let's say you're out somewhere with your daughter and you go to a restaurant. Not drinking. Somebody comes in and they step on your foot. What are you going to do? How are you going to handle that? Or they bump you, or they knock you down, or they're drunk, and they come up and they push you. How are you going to handle that? I'm going to show respect, sir, and I'm going to think about how I have the changes I had to go through to, to over here and all that, and what I've done to learn. And uh, I've been going, I, I went to church and prayed to God and all that there. You know, I figured that I made a a great change in 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 my life, serving God. Now, which daughter are you going? Have you and your daughter talked about where you're going to live if you get out? My oldest daughter, the one that's uh got uh, just overcome cancer, she and uh -huh. she got a home of her own. She's a three bedroom home. Yeah, she, uh, she's the one I'm going to live with if I get out. Tell me a little bit about your health. How are you health-wise? You take any kind of medication? Oh, yeah, I got, uh, I'll take ooh, 11 of one kind and five another. Okay. What, what specifically? Do you know what ailments do you have? Your blood pressure okay? Uh, high, high blood, blood, high blood, and, uh, and I'm a, a diabetic. Okay. And what do you do for your diabetes? Do you take medication for it? I, I got, yes, yes. Sir. That's what these, uh, let's see, five, uh, 11 and five is what, like uh, 17? Uh, six, okay. uh, do you take insulin for your diabetes? 16, 16, type, of it says 16 type of medication. Okay. Gordon, what can you tell us about Mr. Lewis? Mr. Lewis is currently at Camp F, our trustee uh, camp. He is a Class A trustee, according to his record. He has been since 2003. Um, medically, he's got a past medical history of coronary artery disease. He does have stents in the past. Uh, congestive heart failure, hypertension, diabetes, uh, congestive uh, pulmonary disease, um, Pulmonary hypertension, so he does take a multitude of medications. He does have some underlying health issues. As far as his residence agreement in his packet, what I'm seeing right here is a Ramona Lewis uh, with a with an address in Lafayette, but there's no signature, no date. I don't know what communication they've had with, with Ms. Lewis on this. Um, you know, and, and as we're looking at it, like you said, I from a standpoint of his uh, his programming, and he is currently enrolled in anger management, but substance abuse would probably benefit him. Okay. Thank you, Warden. That's all the questions. All right, uh, Mr. Lewis, I don't see any other questions. Are there, is there anything you'd like to say to the board before we go? Uh, all I say is uh, I appreciate y'all giving me a chance to come before you all and try to ask for pardon. And, uh, and if y'all do, I'm gonna do everything within my power to abide by y'all rules. All right, sir, thank you. 
I think we are prepared to vote. Mr. Mirabella. Mr. Lewis, uh, I enjoyed talking with you. Uh, you're you're in, in pretty good shape for 85 years old. Uh, uh, I have to say at 76, 85 ain't old anymore to me. So uh, uh, I, I, uh, you've got a little, you've got a few medical issues. Uh, I am frankly concerned about drinking. Yes, uh, I understand that. Go back to drinking. Let me talk, Mr. Lewis. I know you, you, you're, you're nervous. You want to you find out what's going on, and, and we're going to find out in just a minute. But I'm concerned about, about uh, you going back to drink, even though you hadn't had a drink in a long time. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, whatever decision happens today, we can get you a little bit of treatment uh, so you can get into some substance abuse programs, so you can get some tools, you can learn about AA, you know about AA, because you need to go to AA meetings for the rest of your life. Uh, you're going to be living in a community. Lafayette is a wonderful community. I love it. They have parties. They have festivals every other weekend. So if if you're able to ambulate and get around, you're going to find yourself around alcohol. And you're going to need some strong tools to be able to, to stay away from it. So uh, you've done well. Uh, you've, uh, you're a low risk. Uh, you've been honest with me today. Uh, my vote today would be to recommend to the governor that he commute your sentence to 75 years with parole eligibility. I think you still have to do a little more time, and I'm hoping that maybe, Warden, you can help him get into some sort of a substance abuse program, uh, if that's the vote of everyone, that will uh, give him some tools to make sure he stays sober when he gets out. So good luck to you, Lewis. I hope you get out soon. I hope you get to see your daughters. And I hope you never get in any trouble. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Jeff Freeman. Oh, I concur with Mr. Arabella. Mm -hmm. All right, Mrs. Jackson. Uh, the same. Uh, this was um, my vote is to grant recommendation to commute to 75 years. Mr. Roche. Mr. Lewis, my vote is the same for the same reason. Good luck. Thank you, sir. So you've received um, four votes to recommend your sentence be commuted to 75 years. I concur with my colleagues, so we'll make that recommendation, sir, on your behalf to the government. Good luck to you. Thank you, ma'am. You understand what we just did? So they're going, right. to us, they're going to send a recommendation up to the government. We'll talk about it here in a minute, and we'll work on getting him into the programming as well as trying to get the parole project on board with this. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you, you. One. We appreciate right. it. That concludes our business. Uh, so we will adjourn. It's 4.48 p.m. Thanks for accommodating us today. Amen.